I made an Iron Man account that cannot interact with any updates released after August 10, 2007, the date Old School RuneScape is based on, with the goal of achieving max total level and obtaining every items from the original 2007 collection log. And after that, we'll see what other challenges awaits me. Welcome to 2007 Log. Hello everyone and welcome to my video. So here I am starting the video with a quest, the Regicide quest, for some nice agility XP. Level 59 agility. So I'm about to complete the roving elf quest now so I can choose between a crystal bow or a crystal shield. So I am going to choose a crystal bow even though I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be using it. I'm going to explain in a second why. So here's the roving elf quest. So the reason I'm not sure if I'm going to use a crystal bow is because it's changed quite a bit since 2007. In 2007, the bow started at a 10-10 charge and degraded by 1 charge every 250 arrow shot. After 2500 shot, it would convert to a crystal seed and had to be recharged for a fee. The problem, however, was that its range bonus was lowered every time it lost a charge. And it was lowered massively, going from plus 100 range bonus at 10 charges to plus 64 range bonus at 1 charge. There was, however, a way around the lowering of its stats. What player used to do was bringing two crystal bows everywhere. One they used for shooting, and one they used for degrading. They would shoot the crystal bow for almost 250 shots, and then switch to the bow they had in their inventory for the 250th shot. That would lower the charge and stats from this bow, and they would go back to wearing their full bow for the next 250 shots. The crystal bow is a 4 tick weapon, so 250 shots takes exactly 10 minutes to shoot, so instead of counting the shots, player could just change bow every 10 minutes or so. So this brings me to one of the main changes to the crystal bow since then. Now, the crystal bow still degrades after 2500 shots and still causes the same to recharge it. However, it no longer loses its stats as it degrades, meaning that you can constantly shoot the same bow with no penalties. This change in itself is not the one that's going to make me stop using the bow. I think it would still be fair for me to use the bow as long as I always bring two with me and as long as I switch them every 10 minutes, just like it was in 2007. The change that's making me think I won't be using the bow is the change to its stats. In 2007, its range strain bonus, meaning the strain of its arrows, was 70, but in 2021 it was raised to 78, an 11.5% increase. His range attack bonus of 100 remained unchanged. That's unfortunate because I was planning to use the bow at the Fight Cave, the Dagonaut Kings and for Slayer, but I will only be using it if I'm able to find a way to lower my DPS to how it was in 2007. That may be possible by lowering my attack bonuses by either not wearing armor or wearing armor that gives a negative range attack bonus, but I'll need to look into it. So if you have any suggestion, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll look into it also, and um, if I can't find any way of using the bow, I'll just use something else like the Coral Crossbow or a Rune Crossbow. Alright, so now there's one more quest I want to do, but I need 60 range first, so I'm all geared up here. I'm looking really good with the range armor compared to how I used to. Uh, the only problem is Green Dehide because I don't have the crafting level to do better. That's gonna be my AFK spot for now. Rock crabs, I'm just gonna be here for a little while. I need level 60. I just missed the level, but here's level 60 range. And here is the morning end part 1 quest completed. That's a very nice quest because as you see here, I'm in um, Lieta. So here's Litia, the town I wanted to access to make some money. So I'm finally here, able to make some money, and it's because of this flax field here. So I did have access to a flex field before, the one in Sears Village, but this one here, as you see, is way closer to the bank. Considering that I need to pick around 80 to 85,000 flags in the future, that's going to help a lot here. And just a quick fact about this town here, this fruit tree patch did not exist in 2007, so I am not allowed to use it. So I'm just getting some elves here because I need some crystal seeds to be able to teleport to this town easily. So I'll probably get 10 or so. And here is 70 attack. I can now wear an Abyssal Whip. I'm all set for once I get 85 Slayer. So that's all the money I've got here. It's really not much, so I'm really ready to start and work on making a lot of money. I want to make at least like 15 millions or so. So for that, I will need to pick 20,000 flags. So at first I was thinking of just getting 85 Fletching. 20,000 will get me a bit over that, but I think that's going to be fine. It's a nice round number. 
So let's go and pick 20,000 flags. Alright, so that should be 20,000 flags. And I'm just getting 182. I've just started. <laughs> Okay, so I have no idea how much flags I can actually pick in an hour. So what I'll do is um, I'll actually time myself for an hour and I'll let you know how much I can pick. I'll be right back. Alright, well the hour is up. I use a deposit box, so I have no idea how much flax I have. I'm looking forward to knowing how much I can pick in an hour. Let's check. Okay, and I had earlier 182, so that means that it's almost 2000. That's really nice, actually. I believe when you pick flax at Sears Village, you get around a thousand an hour. And here I got pretty much 2000 so it's pretty much double just being so close to the bank so that's awesome I really wasn't expecting that so that's gonna save me a lot of time so this here should be 10,000 flags very nice just a quick update on the U-logs I'm now at over 50,000 here is the weekly tiers content 141 tiers this week for 49 rune crafting and here it is, this should be 20,000. Right on the dot, just a coincidence too. 20,000 flags, awesome. It was a bit of a grind, not too bad. 20,000 out of um, 80,000 that I'll have to pick eventually. So now I need to spin these flags into bowstrings and I have two options. I can either use a spinning wheel in the Lumbridge Castle, but I need to go down these stairs every inventory and it's a little annoying. So, or I can use my second option, which is uh, the spinning wheel at Nate Isnut which is a little further from the bank, but it is in a straight line, so it's not as annoying to get to. Well, I did some testing, and both in Nate's Nut and Lumbridge, when running from the bank, I get to the spinning wheel right around the 10 second mark, so it really doesn't make too much of a difference which one I use, but here in Nate's Nut, the bank is right here, I can, yeah, I can click on it from here, so it's just a bit more relaxed. I'll get quite a few crafting level with this grind, so level 55. And here's level 60. I just missed it here, but level 65 crafting. That's a lot of crafting level just from spinning flags. And here it is guys, after 10 hours of picking flags, 20 hours of spinning them, 65 crafting. I am now done with over 20,000 bowstrings. So with that done, let's start going through those U-logs. Here's 75 fletching. And with that, I'm already at 6,000 unfinished longbows. And here's level 80 fletching, so that's really nice. I'm now able to fletch magic shortbows. And in my bank, I'm almost done with cutting 20,000 logs. And this here should be 20,000 U longbows unfinished. Now I just need to string them. Here's the weekly tiers of Gutex for level 50 room crafting. Large pouch, that's awesome. I'm now level 50 and up in every skills. It's just that uh, smithing here is going to be giving me some issues. So as I'm stringing these bows here, I actually thought about a reason to keep them for now. So let's bank these bows and let's go get 66 magic. Alright, so I need to high alk about 2.3 thousand of them for 66 magic. And I don't have enough uh, nature rune, so I'm just gonna alk a little bit, and once I have enough money, I'll buy the nature runes that I need. Here's the first magic level of many. Alright, that's perfect. It should be enough nature rune for 66 magic. Now I'm gonna stop alking here because I have a lot of options to do while alking. I can do agility, I can buy vials, so I think I'll buy vials for now actually. Whenever I do some high alchemy, I'm really just going to do something else in the same time. It would be a waste of time to just um, stay the bank and high alt. So here I'm going to buy some vials, because I will need like probably, I've never did the math, but 100 to 200k vials in the future, so I may as well bank some. This is going to be my last inventory in this world here. These uh, vials actually get quite expensive, 12 GP each at the end of the stack, so a bit more expensive than buying them in uh, packs. And they start at 2GP. And here I am, already at 1 million coins. 
Year 66 magic. So I can now enter the wizard guild and I can also do the uh, swan song quest. And with that, I've banked almost 3000 vials. So as for the rest of the Yulong bows, well, now I'm um, craft my own nature rune to out them. Alright, I needed a earth and fire talisman for my next quest, so I may as well get my rune crafting pouches in the same time. So I'm doing the Swan Song quest here, which is one of the five quests from 2007 that got a boost to their XP reward. So in 2007, this quest used to give 10,000 experience in fishing, and it now gives 50,000 experience in fishing. So there's really no way to go around this XP reward, so I'll need to get the 50,000 experience in fishing, but really this experience is neglectable, it maybe saves me about an hour of fishing. And here is this swan song quest. And here's 54 prayer. So that's a really good quest to complete because now I can fish monkfish anytime I want. So I'm ready to get the 99 fishing and bank 99 cooking pretty much anytime now once I'm ready. And also I think that this is the best place for me to mine and bank iron ore, which um, is actually one of the reasons I wanted to get access to this place now. Here's the royal trouble quest. So some nice experience for this quest. And most importantly, I now unlock the full potential of managing the Messalinas castle. So in order to manage this place efficiently, I need to spend 75k a day. So that won't be a problem anymore once I arc all of my new longbows and get around 50 million. So I'm ready to start here. So here I can get some nice herbs, some wood, and also some coal. So my plan here is to bank 99 farmaking here with maple logs. I'd probably bank a part of 99 smithing with coal. And also, I'll always get some herbs. Let's uh, deposit some money. Alright, so that's 1.2 million for now. So that's gonna be maximum resources in mining to get some coal, because I do need 55 smithing and then eventually 99. So we'll be on maximum coal for a while. And the rest in herbs for some nice herbler experience. And by the way, managing a Trun of Missalania, I believe it gives you 540 coal per day if you have a 100% favor. So it's um, really worth it. I'll need um, 2000 coal for um, 55 smithing, so I'll get them in about 4 days and I'll mine the 1k iron. Alright, so here I should have 100% approval, so I'm all set to get my coal. I'll actually need to go there um, once per day to make sure my approval stays at 100%, so that's a little bit annoying, but at least with my house at Relica like this, it will be a bit faster to get there. So here's a quick mining level, level 58. I'm pretty sure this is the best place for me to mine iron. It's pretty close to a bank and I have a nice spot like this with 3 ores. I'm not sure how much ores I would be banking per hour here, but I know that if I do decide to get 99 smithing with steel bars, I will need to get like, I think, almost 250k iron. So, Alright, so this here should be enough for uh, 55 smithing. But actually, since I'm going to be doing some abyss room crafting soon, and every mining level is gonna help, so I'm gonna get probably between level 60 and 65 before stopping. Here's level 60 mining. Here's 63 mining, so I will be stopping here for now because I will be getting level 65 or more when mining pure essence for rune crafting. So let's stop here. And with all that mining, I banked. 4.2k iron ores, so that's nice, I'm going to be able to get a six, 60 smithing instead of 50 actually. So before getting into rune crafting, I'm just going to get a few agility levels, so that's going to be quite useful when abyss rune crafting. But uh, for this video, I think that's going to be enough, I'm going to get those levels in the next episode. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>